Welcome to Underground Storage Tank Compliance. This module is Piping 101. To get started with piping, I really wanted to get into the actual piping, but we need to discuss what kind of system the piping system is first. There are two kinds of piping systems. There's a pressurized piping system. That one is where the pump is actually on the tank underground and pushes fuel uphill to the dispensers. Or there's suction systems, and those have the pump in the dispenser, and they actually suck the fuel out of the tank like a big straw. A few definitions we need to get out of the way before we start. Uh, we try to avoid any acronyms in here because we want everybody to understand what we're talking about. But first, we're talking about piping. Piping is used interchangeable with lines. Um, lines are used a lot when we're talking about some of the regulatory compliance requirements like line leak detection. So piping and lines are interchangeable to the exact same thing. Pipes are what the fuel travels through to get from the tanks to the dispensers. The dispensers are what the customer often refers to as pumps. The dispensers are where the hoses and nozzles are attached and the customer pushes fuel into their vehicles. STP, we use that abbreviation a lot to stand for sub-turbine pump. The sub-turbine pump is what the pump is that is on top of the tanks in a pressurized system that pushes the fuel from the tanks to the dispensers. And then FRP we use a lot when we're talking about pipes or tanks because it's a, a material of construction that is used in both of those. So now that we've got those definitions out of the way, we're going to get into a little bit more about pressurized piping. As I said, pressurized piping is when product is pushed from the, from the tanks to the dispensers using a sub-turbine pump. We do this because one pump can serve multiple dispensers. So if you have just the one pump, it can push product up to all the dispensers, typically at a pressure of between around 30 pounds per square inch. The problem with this environmentally is if a hole or a brick occurs in that piping, you can have a huge release because the, the pressurized system just keeps pushing fuel. It doesn't know to stop unless there's some kind of safeguard in place. Generally, you'll find these at most gas stations, um, especially if a medium or high volume gas station because you want to pump a lot of fuel to as many customers as you can at one time. This is a diagram of the sub pumps. Um, your STP, like I said, is the most popular method of product delivery because it's so versatile. Uh, you find this at most automobile gas stations, it delivers 20 gallons or more per minute. Um, that's limited by regulations. The dispensers will only allow it to go 10 gallons per minute, but that's they're capable of doing much more. So at your high volume locations like a, a truck stop, your diesel fuel can flow a lot more rapidly with these uh, pressurized systems. But a leak can be very detrimental to the environment because you can leak a lot of product in a short amount of time without anything stopping. This is what your pressurized systems look like. Um, these green things on the left, these are um, your sumps for the, the STPs are going to be located after this system is built. You see the piping coming off of these sumps going out to the dispensers. Uh, this is an above ground view of what it looks like inside one of these STP sumps. Uh, we'll refer to these as STP sumps from now on. Um, you can see the piping running through there, and this is the top of the STP uh, inside there. So one one of these can serve, you can see, multiple dispensers. So it's very, very economical to have this. When you pull up to a site, one of the first things you want to look for to make sure if you've got to, to uh, determine if you've got a pressurized or a suction system is you'll look and see if these big manholes are visible. These big manholes are usually on top of an STP sump, and you'll have to take them off to access the subturbine pump sump. And these are another view of what it looks like whenever you're visiting a site. These big metal manhole covers are usually over the STP sumps, and these can be super heavy. And this is what a pull out of the, the subturbine pump looks like. This is a red jacket subturbine pump. And it goes down to within 6 to 10 inches of the bottom of a tank. 
and that's the standard in the industry because water normally settles in the bottom of gasoline uh, now with ethanol fuels that's a little bit more iffy if that'll work um, we want to get any water out of our tanks to make sure these suction systems are not i mean these pressurized systems are not sucking water out and pushing it up to the customer's vehicles and this is just another view of a sub turbine sump that has a the top of the sub turbine pump visible when we talk about suction piping there are different kinds of suction piping systems um, the main overall thing that suction piping systems have in common is that the pump is actually located in the dispenser on the island unit where the customer pushes fuel into their cars so if you have multiple dispensers you have multiple of these pumps um, from the environmental perspective these are much safer systems because they're not going to be pushing fuel into the ground if there are any holes in the system so you have the 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 pump in the bottom of this dispenser and it's sucking fuel from this tank down here up this pipe to the customer's vehicles so these are what they look like when you've got the side section of the dispensers taken off you can see there's a big pulley in there and these are creating a pressure area and they're sucking up all the fluid and then pushing it out to the vehicles in your cars the problems with these of course is that every one of these dispensers have to have all this equipment so in a pressurized system you have one pump in a suction system every dispenser has a pump and a motor and pulleys and their own distinct separate piping run to each one of these so these can be quite equipment burdensome um, this is just another view of where the pump is inside the dispenser whenever you start up one of these dispensers you usually know as soon as you take the nozzle off of the dispenser it'll start rattling you can feel it vibrating and it makes a lot of noise depending on how old it is some of the newer ones are kind of quiet but if you put your hand on it you can feel it vibrating pretty well because that suction system is running and like I said, there's two kinds of suction systems. One's called the US system. Um, even though it's safer than the pressurized system, you have check valves in here. So if these check valves at the end, they keep the whole thing pressurized, which is great if you want fuel to be available every time. Um, as we've progressed over time, um, we used to make the system so the check valves at the end, so that it always had pressure under here, so there was always liquid available. And then they moved up to the, the angle check valve here um, as the systems progressed. But if you had a leak, it would all drain to wherever that hole was. Because so the product would go up here, would drain down here, and then every time it would start up, it would fill back up with liquid and then drain back to here again. Then fill back up with liquid, then drain back to here again. So you could have quite a bit of product released to the environment. The safe suction system, or what's commonly referred to as the European suction system removed all the check valves at the ends and they put them up here towards at the very top where the dispenser is located at the base of the suction pump they did this so that if a hole develops anywhere along the piping run it doesn't drain into the environment it drains back into the tank so all the liquid drains in here it creates a vapor lock on the system and the system is really slow to start back up because it has to get prime again or get fluid solid back up in here until it can start pumping fuel into people's vehicles again now, there's a lot of limitations of suction systems you don't find those very often in the united states at gas stations unless they're very small gas stations with one or two dispensers you'll find them sometimes at fleet fueling facilities with a, a limited amount of, of dispensers just because they are safer um, the product delivery is slower much slower than pressurized systems requires a larger diameter pipe the tank can't be too far away from the pumps so it has to be the piping run is too long the system won't work they can vapor lock at high altitudes and if the temperatures get too high you have to account for tank diameter and the depth has to be accounted for if the tanks are too deep it won't work every pump has its own piping run so you have much more piping that you have to install for an equivalent size system 
So if you had four dispensers at a pressurized system, you would only have to run piping, one piping run. If you had four dispensers at a suction system, it would have four distinct separate piping runs, um, usually two separate tanks. Uh, so the equivalent systems require a lot more equipment for a, a suction system than a pressurized system. Um, next time we're going to get into some talk about the actual how the pipes are made, what they're made out of, um, piping runs, the different methods of piping that are out there. Uh, it'll be Piping 201. So if you're interested in learning more about this, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to any questions or comments you guys have. And anytime you want to reach out, we have a LinkedIn group on LinkedIn, Underground Storage Tank Compliance is all it's called. And feel free to join, ask questions, provide comments. Uh, we'd like to have more people involved. And anytime you guys want to get involved or you want to know more information, just let me know. Thanks.